I'm really excited to um, have this discussion today uh, with Stani uh, Kolochov, who is the founder and CEO of Aave. For those who don't know Aave, uh, it's an open source and non-custodial liquidity market pool uh, that allows you to earn interest on deposits and borrow assets. Stani uh, was very early in the Ethereum space. He was studying law at the University of Helsinki, and then he got into Ethereum and released in 2007 ETHLAND, which was one of the first DeFi applications. Since then, he founded Aave, and which officially launched uh, in January 2020 and is one of the largest lending platforms in the space. So I'm very excited to... Um, have this conversation with you today, uh, Stani, um, and want to uh, bridge the gap here between, or try to bridge the gap between centralized finance and decentralized finance, and want to have your perspective. Um, so my first question is, um, you know, Ave is a leader in the DeFi space and lending space, and um, could you shed a light on how different that is from uh, centralized finance solutions that we know? Yeah, definitely. So, so practically what the Aave protocol itself, uh, by the way, thanks Vanessa from the introductions. That was very, very well. But just, just to say uh, Aave protocol itself is, is as a money market, how it works is that uh, you deposit cryptographic assets into the protocol and, and then those assets uh, then can be in a pooled way borrowed out, which generates interest yields for the uh, depositors. Now, what's interesting here, uh, what Aave is doing and what is different from, let's say, centralized providers is that in, in centralized fashion, you usually take custody of the funds. So let's say you're a service provider that uh, promises some sort of a yield for the uh, users. You take the, uh, the, the Bitcoin or Ethereum and, and then uh, you pay interest on them when you're lending them out. How Aave protocol works in decentralized finance in general is that uh, the execution is based on smart contracts, which practically means that uh, the logic on how uh, your assets are used in the protocol is hard coded uh, in a way, in, in a way uh, that there is different kind of uh, limitations of, of what uh, the smart contracts can do with your assets. And this removes this kind of like a trust element uh, from from the uh, protocol. And to add to that, one interesting part, of course, is the transparency. Uh, since when you deposit the, the assets into the other protocol, it also means that all of the uh, all of the transactioning, um, all of the exposures there are completely completely auditable by anyone. So anyone can look at any point of the uh, time into other protocol and see the exposure. And that's not the case, for example, with centralized financial providers, because there the the kind of like a uh, basis is different. So you are trusting the the entities, and decentralized finance is trying to kind of like avoid having these trust relationships. And of course, uh, the third important thing is that these uh, uh, these protocols are pretty much accessible by anyone. And the idea is also that not just accessible by anyone but anyone could actually build some other kind of innovation on top of the existing infrastructure that lies in Ethereum and decentralized finance. I think those components are the most important ones. And thank you for this. And then we see that the, the yields in decentralized finance are really interesting, you know, in the context of low interest uh, rates. Um, do you see financial institutions trying to participate in DeFi or create the same mechanisms as DeFi? How are the large incumbents financial institution interacting or trying to interact with DeFi protocols? And how do you see this moving forward? Yeah, I would say that now we're living in interesting times in decentralized finance because the liquidity pipelines are very narrow and that is kind of like raising the interest, rate, interest rates that you have in decentralized finance, finance and what you can earn. And it's very substantially different compared to what we have in the traditional finance where we have low interest economy at the moment. And we see uh, even sustain sustainable lending protocols like Aave and other protocols out there offering 10% of a uh, yield. And mainly the yield is based on the fact that the the uh, liquidity in decent as finance is very narrow at, at the moment. So there is a lot of innovation going on, new protocols coming in and each new protocol practically uh, 
uh, consumes more of the stablecoin liquidity. From the institutional perspective, um, uh, it definitely creates a new opportunities in terms of like where you could you could actually store cash and, and get higher yield out of it. But for institutions to come to this point, uh, certain things must to happen. And one of those things is that these DeFi protocols have to live a bit longer so that the risks uh, kind of like a risk and the history and track record is, is more proven. And that is now happening a bit more in the sense that uh, uh, Aave protocol was launched over a year ago. The version two was uh, three months ago launched. And there is a substantial amount of uh, risk assessment that goes into the protocol. There's third party auditors uh, that are auditing the code and ensuring that there's, there isn't any kind of uh, vulnerabilities. And I think it's just a, uh, phase that takes a bit more time, uh, but once it once these risk appetites are more uh, comfortable for uh, traditional uh, financial institutions, uh, it creates very big opportunity. And in terms of integrations as well and usability, what is uh, happening now is that uh, there is a lot of integrations going on into custodians, and those custodians could offer this kind of a yield opportunity to De DeFi to their institutional users. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, and so, you know, uh, the DeFi protocols focus on obviously financial mechanisms that we are familiar with, whether it's lending or collateralization. Um, do you see uh, the DeFi mechanisms beyond going beyond the financial services? Are there any other spaces where you see it, um, you know, uh, or you see adoption for commerce, whether it's NFTs, social media, is there, is there other uh, areas where enterprises can, can use DeFi? I think uh, in overall Web3 is about value and creating value networks. Uh, in, in particular, decentralized finance is, is pretty much like interaction with that value, whether it's, it's uh, ERC-20 uh, fungible, assets, uh, currencies, or stable coins, or for example, um, NFTs, the non-fungible tokens that might represent, for example, digital art, might represent, for example, uh, some uh, copyright might be a real property or any kind of non-fungible uh, property. And I believe that uh, as we have this distributed, distributed ledger and we're able to safely store information and very securely because of the blockchain, uh, we're also able to uh, capture a lot of value because of the fact that let's say in creator economy now and what is happening in the fee space uh, is that uh, there isn't uh, middlemen in, in between and, and the let's say the artist and their fans they have direct relationships the same will happen with the great uh, with the uh, e-commerce economy where you can create different kinds of goods and services and, and especially goods and distribute those goods directly to your uh, end consumers that are actually loving your products and all these relationships and, and and the tokenization of these relationships and the assets will become financial in the sense that you could then use them as a collateral in the other protocol and you can create different kinds of uh, ways to to actually uh, interact with that value and I, I think like we're still very early in what could be built but essentially uh, NFTs uh, decentralized finance and everything's all about value that can actually be just used more efficiently and, and I think Aave will be part of that as well in the future. Yeah, so creating new asset classes that people can trade on, uh, which can be related to uh, physical goods or digital goods. Um, I think that's a pretty exciting uh, outlook. Um, but if enterprises wanted to go that route, like what would it take for this to come true? Like, are there things that, you know, in the enterprise world, um, they need to get more comfortable with uh, in order to leverage DeFi, uh, whether it's for financial purposes, or as you've mentioned in the creative uh, economy or other um, new uh, goods and services? I think what's important is the infrastructure. So as, as we're building more things uh, overall in the EFI, for example, if you look at commerce, uh, to plug in decentralized finance into commerce, we, we need to, of course, have that commercial value on chain. So let's say if you are selling goods and services on a uh, large scale or we are s selling any, any kind of like a items, 
in, in that sense, uh, if you get that value and, and that value transition uh, on chain, so let's say if you have a, it, it could be even like a use case, very uh, traditional and even a cliche use case is the supply chain finance, right? Everyone wants to solve it. There's so many components into it in enterprise level. And, and, and kind of like once we have that kind of like a uh, uh, value in, in the uh, uh, on-chain ecosystem, then we can plug in something like DeFi and uh, create uh, receivable finances, uh, uh, cash advances, and, and other kinds of uh, uh, financial products. And I think it just requires more and more projects working on this, especially in enterprise level, because there's scalability. So there's actually a ways to, to think of uh, and solve these solutions, how we can get more value into the Web3 and then utilize the and plug it in. And I think it just requires more different kinds of proof of concepts and just experimentations, and that will lead to, to actually execution eventually. I know that um, there's a lot of concerns um, around uh, security and infrastructure. Is that something that you've, um, you've heard from uh, your enterprise interactions? Um, would love to have more of your views on that. Yes, so, so DeFi is not equal in the sense that uh, because it's an open system, meaning that anyone can actually create uh, any part of the world a new DeFi protocol and, and, and create uh, or, or build on top of what, whatever exists at the moment in the DeFi space, uh, there, there's various ways of building protocols. It can be done very securely or it can be done in a way that you are experimenting new financial primitives. Uh, I think we're in the state in decent as finance where we have protocols that are putting a lot of effort into security. For example, it used to be traditionally uh, quite common that you audit your, your protocol uh, from one or two independent auditors. Uh, Aave, for example, we have over five, uh, yeah, five audits at the moment on the uh, version two of the protocol. We do formal verification, which is mathematical proofs of that the protocol does exactly how it's uh, programmed. And also we do uh, economical modeling as well. So Gauntlet is a service provider that we're using that actually has ass assessed the market risk of, of the, the protocol and, and the potential uh, uh, kind of like a stress testing on how, how much the, the protocol can actually take a uh, decrease of the value of the collaterals uh, without actually becoming insolvent. So there's actually a lot of tools at the moment uh, that are helping uh, the whole community. And I think over time, uh, as these protocols mature, the, the risk, risk also decreases, especially on the security side. Great. And so um, Aave released uh, its V2. What's next for Aave? So currently, uh, we're building infrastructure into other practically networks that we, we have to kind of like support. So we want to see the, the current like settlement layer uh, we have in Ethereum also grow in layer twos that are settling transactions into Ethereum. So our goal is actually uh, next uh, figure out how we could actually get more transactions in a smaller gas cost and include more uh, uh, people into the Aave ecosystem. So this is something we're working now uh, mainly. Amazing. Well, we're out of time, but Stani, thank you so much for your insights. And um, I hope we'll um, see more and more DeFi projects going to mainstream and work with enterprise uh, in the future. Thank you, Vanessa. It was a pleasure. Have thank a great you. day, everyone. Likewise.